I made some spoons. I am not an expert spoon carver at all, but I have carved a few spoons over the past couple of years, and I love carving spoons. And my favorite part is sitting down with a knife and carving out the final shape. And I love to do that while I'm just hanging out, relaxing with the family, so I feel like I'm being productive while still being a good mom. Stop hitting your brother! So this is not a how-to video at all. This is me just experimenting to see what is the best way for me to get to that point where I could start carving. So let's get to it. All right, so I picked some wood for my scrap pile. There's some olive wood, some walnut, and some maple. So the first thing that I do is I just draw a rough shape of a spoon that would fit on the blank. I don't use any templates. I just let the grain of the wood decide what shape the spoon is going to be. I like to carve out the bowl of my spoons first because you could easily clamp the piece down. For my first experiment, I tried to use a round nose router bit in my trim router. And I started in the center of the circle that I drew out and then just kept slowly going around until I got to the pencil lines that I drew out. Then after reaching those pencil lines, I lowered the bit by a very little amount and then repeated the same process, making sure not to go all the way to the edge, just like keeping it in a little bit so there would be like a little steepness to the bowl. I did this about five or six times, lowering the bit every time, and it's bowl shaped, but it's not so clean. So I took my Dremel and, with a sanding attachment and just smoothed up all those lines, and then I hand sanded it all afterwards. And it looks pretty good to me. It looks like a pretty decent bowl shape. For my next experiment, I wanted to see if I could get a perfect circle. So I put a flap disc on my angle grinder and then just went to town. So I don't have any of those carving discs. That would probably be really helpful in this situation. Um, this was super dusty and I definitely want to try those carving discs to do something like this. The circle was definitely not perfect and it was also just a little bit too large so I couldn't make a spoon out of it, but I'm going to make a spoon rest out of it. The circle was not perfect at all so I attached a sanding disc onto my Dremel and then just sanded everything smooth and it got pretty decently smooth and then just hand sanded it and I think that looks like a pretty good bowl shape to me too. Next up, I'm going to do the tried and true hand carving method. So this olive wood did not have any straight grain on it. And normally I like to follow the grain for my handles, but it just would look weird if I did that. So I'm making it straight. I know I shouldn't normally do that, but just going to do it anyway. So I learned everything that I know about spoon carving from Paul Sellers videos. So I'm going to link to his video down below and you should definitely check them out if you're interested in spoon carving. This is only my second time using this gouge, so you're watching me learn as I go here. It is so fun to use and I cannot wait to do it more. I just felt like carving spoons all day. Using the gouge is super satisfying and I'm pretty sure it's just as satisfying to watch, so please enjoy the next couple moments. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Moving on, I started sanding the inside of the bowls, but then decided to make a gooseneck scraper. So towards the end of the video, I'll show how I made that. That was super fun to carve, and I think it looks pretty good. So the next one, I roughed it out with the gouge, and then I used a hook knife to shape the rest of the bowl. So the reason why I'm doing these small projects is because my kids are home on vacation. So I decided that this was going to be a really good project that they could get their hands on. Most of these hand tools are pretty safe, so it's a really great project to do with kids. Now all the bowls are carved out and it's time to cut them to rough shape. 
The first method I'm going to try is the bandsaw. So I'm just going to follow the line of the grain here to create the handle and cut it out to rough shape. Easy enough. Next up, I'm going to use the jigsaw. So I really don't like using the jigsaw and this definitely would not be my preferred method, but I figured since some of you might be watching this to get some ideas on how to make your spoons, if you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw would definitely work. Now remember, this is the one that I carved out with the angle grinder, so it's not technically a spoon, it's a spoon rest. So it's a little bit of a weird shape and it was a little bit odd to cut. Next up, I'm going to try to cut it out to shape using hand tools only. This is actually how I made my first couple of spoons. My first couple of spoons, I use zero power tools. So Paul Seller's video shows exactly how to do this and describes it really well. But basically use a handsaw to cut to the lines that you want to be the handle. And then after you create those definitions of the handle, you can take a chisel and then chisel away up to those lines. And here's the reason why I made the curve cut. It's so that when you're chiseling, it, the chiseling won't follow the grain if it like was going too far into the handle. Like it will stop before the curve cut and you won't ruin the shape of your handle. So this piece was actually not going to be a spoon. It was going to be a serving fork, but I didn't end up liking the shape of it. So I ended up tossing it. So you won't see it again later in the video. Now that all of them are cut to rough shape, it's time to start actually shaping them into something that looks like a spoon. So the first method that I try is the bandsaw. This is actually a little bit of an advanced technique, but I actually really enjoy doing this on the bandsaw. Just have to be super careful and you could take away a lot of material here. All right, so that's already starting to look like a spoon to me. The next method that I tried was to use the bench top sander. This took quite a long time and I did not enjoy this method, but it did work. Next up, I roughed out this spatula on the bandsaw and then I used the flap disc on my angle grinder to bring it closer to a spatula shape. And that actually worked really well. It took off a lot of material really quickly. All the spoons were now roughly shaped like spoons. So I used my spoke shave to refine the shape a little bit more. The handles on this olive wood ones the grain was running in all different directions, so I had to be aware to go down on one side and up on the other side to avoid tear out. If you ever want a good lesson on grain direction, carve a spoon. I just kept going back and forth between the bowl and the handle, just using the spoke shave to clear up as much of the waste as I possibly could to get it to its final shape before I could carve it. The hardest spot to remove the material on the spoon is definitely the tip of the bowl because it's end grain. So this spot just always needs some extra love and attention on all the spoons. The spoke shave is an excellent tool for kids to use. It's super safe and it's really satisfying for them to use also. My son really enjoyed this and it was also fun to spend some time with him and to teach him some things about what I do. So this weird little spoon rest was a little bit interesting to get it to final shape. So I wanted the handle of it to kind of look like it was a ball that was attached to the bowl part. So I used some hand saws to create a stop line in the top, bottoms, and sides first. And then I was able to refine the shape with the chisel, just going up to that line that I had cut, creating a kind of ball-like shape on the end of this thing. And now it's starting to look a little bit more like something. And then I just had to do the same thing on the bowl part to create that curve that was going to meet the handle. I'm chiseling along end grain here. So I had to make sure that my chisel was super sharp in order for it to go smoothly. So every like 10 or 15 minutes or so, I would rub my chisels on the strop just to polish it and keep it nice and sharp. And now this weird little thing is starting to look pretty cool. So now it's my favorite part of the spoon carving, the actual carving part. I like to sit and relax and enjoy just carving away and refining the final shape of all these spoons. So while I do that, let's take a moment to hear from this week's sponsor. 
I love being able to create unique objects with my hands, and if you're watching this video, the likelihood that you like to live your life hands-on as well is pretty high. WD-40 products enable me to live my life hands-on every day by fixing what's broken or just by maintaining my shop. WD-40 has been helping out the makers and the doers like us for over 65 years, and now they are running the contest to turn the spotlight onto you guys. If you create a 10 to 60 second video showing how you live life hands-on using one or more WD-40 products, you could have a chance to win up to $5,000. So head on over to WD40.com contest to learn more and to enter. Thank you WD40 for allowing me to live my life hands-on by helping me every day around my shop. So now let me go finish those spoons. I can literally sit and just carve away at these spoons for hours on end, trying to make them perfect. It is just the most relaxing thing to me. So after carving them, I decided to finish them with a card scraper instead of sanding. And I really loved how that finish was looking on the handles. So I decided to make a gooseneck scraper for the bowls. I had an extra scraper lying around. So I just cut out what I thought would be a good shape on a scrap piece of paper, placed it on the extra card scraper that I had, and then used a Sharpie to draw out the shape. Then I put a cutting wheel on my Dremel and just followed the lines to cut the whole thing out. So I had an extra scraper lying around to make this, but I've seen people make similar ones using just old saws or any other metal objects that they have in their shop. I wasn't able to cut those narrow curves in the middle, but those middle pieces came off pretty easily. Now it's cut out to rough shape. I just need to clean up all of those cuts. So I did that on my benchtop sander. This went super quick to clean up all those cuts. The next thing that I need to do was just clean up that middle curve in there because I could not do that on the benchtop sander. So the Dremel with the sanding attachment was the perfect tool for this job. And this took me maybe 10, 15 minutes to make, super easy. Next up, I just needed to file down all the burrs that were created from the cutting and the sanding. And then I went through the process of sharpening it and using a burnisher to create a burr so that I can actually use it to scrape the insides of the spoons. I'm so happy that I decided to make this. It was so easy to make and now it was so easy to refine the inside of the bowl and scrape away any imperfections and it left a really nice finish on the spoons as well. It also really came in handy for the spatula that I made because it was not a flat spatula, there was like a curve in it. Now all of these spoons are ready for finish. I used this cutting board oil, which is a food safe finish and which is perfect for these spoons. So before putting the finish on, I actually soaked them in some water and then when it fully dried, if there were any fuzzies, I knocked that down with some super high grit sandpaper just to get it super smooth. And then that way it will prevent any fuzzies from ever happening if I ever wash these. Well, I will wash them. So when I do wash them, it will prevent fuzzies. So finally getting the oil on all these was just so satisfying. The grain popping out just made it all worth it. I didn't make this last spoon in this video. I made it a few weeks ago, but I figured this was a good time to put some finish on it. After the oil soaked in for a little bit, I rubbed off all the excess and then I used some wood wax to just protect it even further. And now they're done. If anyone was curious what a spoon rest is, it's something you leave on your counter to put a dirty spoon on while you're cooking to prevent your counter from getting dirty. So that was a really fun experiment. I think that this olive wood one is by far my favorite. Even though the, the handle does not have a straight grain, I think it's gonna be strong enough and that I think it's fine. But for future spoons, I'm definitely going to be aware of that. So um, this video is just an experiment for me trying to figure out what's the best way to get a, a blank in order to start carving. So for me, the, my favorite way to carve out the bowl was definitely using the gouge and the hook knife. So if I were in a production mode and making a bunch of these spoons, that would not be the fastest way at all. And I would figure out some sort of jig for the router or the angle grinder. Because the angle grinder, it was too wide of a bowl, not really good for regular spoons. Maybe if I had one of those small little carving discs that I could figure out a way to make a smaller bowl. I don't have one of those, but that could be a cool idea. Um, but definitely for me, the hand tools to make the bowl was my favorite. I just got lost in there and I could have just carved for hours 
if I didn't have other things to do. So um, next up, roughing out the shape. I prefer the bandsaw. Quick, easy, simple, um, easier than for me than the other methods, but the other methods work just as well. I also did some shaping on the bandsaw, which I think is fun to do, but it definitely is a little bit dangerous and more of an advanced technique, so be careful there. And um, next, I love using the spoke shave to shape it. That thing is so much fun, and I totally want to get more of those. Definitely going to get more of those. <laughs> um, and then after that, it's the carving, which is my favorite part. I could just sit and carve for hours on end trying to make these spoons perfect. And none of these are perfect at all, and I think that's actually what makes them cool. I love that you could see the facets from the tool marks on these pieces. I just think it looks so cool that you could tell that these were made by hand. And I think that's what makes them special and unique. So I hope that this video inspires you guys to just go out there, figure it out, figure out which way works best for you, and just go and make something with your hands. So thank you again so much for joining me on this little experiment. And don't forget to head on over to wd40.com contest so you can see all of the details for the contest and you can enter to win some amazing prizes. So thanks again, and I will see you on the next project. Now here's some close-ups of the spoons. This is the one that I use the gouge on. I love how this handle meets the bowl. I just, that was really fun to carve. I shaped the spatula with the angle grinder and I just love that curly grain. This is the one that I roughed out with the router and I love how the handle meets the bowl over here and how the back has all those facets from the hand carving and also that little like spine detail from the bowl to the handle, very fun to do. I used the hook knife to shape most of the bowl of this one and I also love how the bowl meets the handle on that one and how you can see the facets again on all around the edges. I love seeing the tool marks. And now the spoon rest that I carved out with the angle grinder. So this thing is so weird, but it's actually my favorite. The little ball in the end was so fun to do and I think it looks like a little jewel with all those facets. So I'm really happy I left all the imperfections on here because it's going to be a good reminder when I look back at it to see how much I improved.